so welcome to the world's first Tag Angola review. Would you sit here? Never seen that before. That's cool. Look at, look at this monster. It doesn't really taste like anything because that has never happened before. This is what it feels like. But I really wanted to show you how clean it is. So guys, hello and welcome from the hottest airport in the world here in Luanda. There's no air conditioning. I'm sweating like a pig, but I'm super excited because I'm about to go on the most anticipated flight of the year for myself. I'll be flying Tech Angola on their 777 in business class from Luanda all the way to Lisbon. I know very little about Tech Angola. Uh, all I know is that they don't like cameras and that they're partially banned from European airspace. Um, so I'm at the airport right now. I'm going to take you to their lounge a little uh, after this intro. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's a big adventure. Uh, they have a very small fleet. They have like six 777s and like six 737s and they have like direct flights to Sao Paulo, Cuba and Lisbon, uh, Portugal and Porto because uh, Angola used to be a Portuguese uh, colony. Um, however, I have zero idea what to expect today, but I think it's going to be a great adventure and I can't wait for the flight. So let's hope I don't get into troubles because of the camera, because I heard that they are not really camera friendly. Um, but for now, I'm gonna take you to the lounge and then we go to the gate. Uh, we have a bus boarding because there are no um, jet bridges here. And then we are off to Portugal. All right, let's go. So welcome on board TAG's um, 777 in business class and as you can see it comes in a 232 configuration and then you have eight first class seats in the front and uh, the remaining seats are in economy class and the difference is they have a 333 configuration in, uh, in their economy class which most of the airlines on a 777 they have a 343. So um, I think that's very generous in terms of space. But let me give you a little seat tour. And the first thing I've noticed is that there is something missing. Um, the Ottoman here is, yeah, I think it has seen better days. God knows who was sitting here. Um, then you have the screen in front of you. And this is pretty much the seat. I found a blanket, a pillow. The padding feels really nice, to be honest. Uh, here's your remote control, a reading light and um, a privacy divider here. Seat controls on the back, like the seat also goes completely flat. And then you have some storage here, um, as well as down here and uh, a power outlet. I don't know whether you see it, but there's a power outlet. Yeah, and your foldable table is here, but this is broken as well. I can't, I can't close it. So, no idea who's sitting here and did all this to this beautiful seat but uh, I hope I can move a little bit because this is not ideal here because the lavatory is right there as well uh, but so far 
I don't see I don't see a lot of passengers, so I think I can move uh, to a different seat and don't have to surrender my window as well. Um, so far, the first impression of the crew, they're nice. Um, they didn't seem to mind the camera until now, so I think it's going to be a good flight. So, and this is probably the most ungrateful seat you could probably get on this flight. Um, luckily today it's not uh, too busy or the cabin isn't full, but you might end up sitting in between uh, two other passengers, which isn't the norm anymore these days. You know, usually the business class now tends to have uh, direct aisle access for each seat. But, uh, for example, I said like Turkish Airlines, the old business class is still a 232. So I think this is probably the most uncomfortable, the middle seat here. Or what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Would you sit here? I rather would sit somewhere at the window or maybe here at the aisle, but I don't want to be squeezed in, in between two strangers. And this are uh, the air sickness bags which are out of uh, plastic. Never seen that before. That's cool. So as you probably noticed, I changed seat. Now I have a functioning one. Um, no parts are missing. I also just got my welcome drink. Well, I would say it's more of a welcome sip because that's the way they served it. And also quite interesting, an amenity kit. Um, as usual, I'm going to talk to you through the mannequin later, but it smells very interesting. So I also earlier said that uh, Takangola is partially banned from European airspace. That is so because they're only allowed to fly that 777 into Portugal. Um, they were completely banned for some time, and so what they did is they leased uh, South African Airways 747-300 uh, back in the days and ordered themselves uh, a few triple sevens which are now allowed to operate to Portugal and from Portugal. Also in the intro I said that they don't like cameras um, and you're probably asking yourself where do I get that information from. I remember reading Ben's uh, One Mile at a Time review on Takangola's first class where they were really suspicious of him taking photos and they even asked him uh, to delete his photos. Um, yeah, that's why I've heard they're not very camera friendly, but so far it seems like that they don't mind. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit low profile, more than I usually am, but the crew has big smiles on their face, and I'm gonna try later, let's see how they are with the camera, and whether they're gonna say something, but so far the crew is like super cool, they're really nice. This is done by pushing the Earbuds, uh, socks, a shoehorn, my favorite facial mist. We've got a comb, moisturizer, eye shades, that looks like shampoo, a gentle cleanser, a toothbrush, and lip balm. So, 
it is clearly exceeding my expectations um, because most of the nice fancy airlines don't even have those many items in their amenity kits but that's what it looks like and uh, considering that this is a what six seven hour flight this is very generous that's a good amenity kit let me also introduce the in-flight entertainment and this is the remote control once again it's a forward-facing seat uh, which is not really my favorite because you're usually quite far away from the screen but uh, luckily there's a remote control so I can operate uh, the entertainment from here and let's see what kind of movie choices we have nothing really shows up neither on the remote or on the screen in front of me I, I don't know whether it's functional or it still needs a little bit of time the only thing that works is literally the flight map that is all I can access maybe it needs a, a bit of time however once it's working I'm gonna introduce it to you I don't know what it is but every time the food arrives the turbulence is hidden I have no idea why that is so uh, Kevin Crew just gave me a weird smile um, so food arrived, and as I said, there was no menus, um, but I could choose between uh, chicken or beef. And it is pretty much a standard economy class meal uh, with a few additional items. So there is, I guess that's the starter and a salad, and it's both still wrapped in a foil and a bun, which definitely has seen better dyes. And let's see uh, what we have right here. And this is it, this is the chicken. Um, Jesus, those turbulences are intense. So this is the meal. It is literally swimming in sauce. I don't know what it is, but it is chicken potato soup. But it doesn't look too tasty. And then I have a wine the water to go with the entire meal so and this is the cutlery wrapped in plastic as well but at least it's not plastic cutlery so yeah in fact you don't really get like a special business class meal you do get a customized meal in uh, first class but today we are traveling in business but now let's have a look at the chicken but this is a massive chunk I mean, look at, look at this monster. Remember my Biman Bangladesh flight? It was served in the same way, like still wrapped. I mean, it takes two seconds for the crew to do, remove it. But okay, this is not Qatar Airways here, so. I mean, it's all right, but Actually, it's not. It's like shit. It's rubbish. It's not really nice. It doesn't really taste like anything. Neither the potatoes or the chicken. Um, yeah. So yeah, at max, this is like a, a premium economy meal. But it's definitely far, far away from any business class dining standards um, it's also a shame I thought they was they were gonna offer some local food um, I don't know whether there is such a thing but I'm sure they have some uh, something in Angola but it was literally just beef or chicken nothing local unfortunately I would have loved to try that oh my god I love walnuts they're my favorite all-time favorite that was very, very average, below average probably, but it was definitely the, the best economy class meal I've ever been served in business class because that has never happened before. Um, but as I said, like the crews were attentive, they run around, uh, they run up and down the aisle, which is nice, and they come and top up my glass. Um, so they're not, they're not lazy, not as lazy as 
I know it from other African carriers. That is the dessert. Uh, she said I could choose between uh, a cheese platter or nougat something. She didn't tell me what it was. I'm gonna try it in a little bit. So for all the super aviation geeks out there, did you know that TAX 777 was the very first 777 to be operated by an African airline? Did you know that? Probably not. TAC Angola actually has or offers Wi-Fi on their 777. So you connect to TAC on air. And uh, there you go. 10 megabytes for five US dollars. For eight US dollars, you get 20 megabytes. For, for 20 US dollars, you get 50, 50 megabytes. And $30 for 100 megabytes. Uh, this is actually pretty, pretty expensive. 100 megabytes, that probably lasts you I don't know what you do if you do Instagram and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't last you very long. It's way too expensive in my opinion. I asked for coffee. I got an espresso. Um, if I would drink this, I would probably poop myself. So I've asked for a little bit of uh, milk because otherwise this is way too strong. But it smells really good. Doesn't the best coffee in the world comes from Africa? I think so, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought always the best coffee beans come from Ethiopia. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I love to drink coffee, but I know very little about uh, coffee beans. So before it gets too dark in the cabin, I quickly demonstrate you what it looks like when the bed goes completely flat. I don't think they have any bedding, but that actually that actually looks pretty comfortable. And this is what it feels like. Uh, I mean, it's not the most comfortable bed I've ever had, but uh, and the padding is extremely soft. So now I'm inside the bathroom. You're probably wondering what am I doing here, but I really wanted to show you how clean it is because that's usually not the norm on African carriers, and. Uh, something I have never seen before maybe you have but there's a soap bar right here um, yeah what else do we have we have like refreshing towels then there is some cologne branded cups I assume to brush your teeth and then uh, refreshing towels
should have watched uh, my South African Airways review. Um, I got some nice views from up there as well, but this is just beautiful. So it is an hour prior arrival in Lisbon. And uh, I don't know whether this is dinner or lunch. It's definitely very interesting. Um, it's a cold platter kind of thing with a single salad leaf, cheese, uh, olive, two slices of tomato, and a fruit salad, as well as a rock, like stone hard uh, bun with butter as well so yeah, I don't really know what to make of this but uh, it certainly looks very interesting and unique I don't even know where the I want to eat this <laughs> So we are descending soon and I want to sum up my flight today and uh, it was completely the opposite of what I expected it to be. I was expecting hooligan crew who are just like super lazy, who won't let me film, who are probably not passionate about their jobs but it was pretty much the opposite. I found a very lovely crew here on this plane. Uh, they've all been very nice um, and the seed and the hard product as such is also very enjoyable. Um, the food was below average, we don't have to talk about that, but the experience as such to fly a carrier, not many of us get to fly, priceless. So and this is what I love and then flying over Africa where you get to enjoy this beautiful scenery. Um, I can't think of anything more exciting than this and uh, it was totally worth the money. I really enjoyed it and I, I would definitely buy them again because it's been such an adventure. Uh, also the on-ground experience in the airport, a complete different world and I appreciate that so much that I get the chance to travel and I get to see places like this which are completely different from what I what I know from back home. So I really hope that you enjoyed the world's very first Tac Angola review on YouTube. Um, maybe there have been some before but this is probably the most comprehensive uh, you will find on the internet and uh, yeah it was so much fun um, especially traveling all the way to Angola uh, just in order to bring you the coolest content. So please reward me with a big thumbs up, hit that like button, uh, let me know in the comment section below what did you think of Tag and Cola, what is your impression, what do you think of them after seeing this video uh, and have you ever been on an airline that has a very bad reputation or is banned somewhere, uh, also let me know in the comment section below because I really want to know. Uh, if you can please support me on Patreon uh, to keep my channel running, you know it's very hard these days to sustain a channel on YouTube. Um, and guys, as always, I really appreciate your time watching this video. And as always, safe travels. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more unique airline content. Thank you so much.